guys have enjoyed this, I'd like to ask each and every one of you to take the time. Don't tell us in the comments. You can, but please take the time and direct message all the sponsors involved here. Take the time, write them, tell them you love it, tell them you want to see more. Tell them. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Alex. How's it going? Um, thank you guys so much for coming and thanks for all the support. I've never seen a video series that's gotten this much just comments, engagement, and stuff like that. Thanks. Well, first of all, I just want to say now. none of this would be possible without you know the mastermind himself. Aaron for coming up with this idea and getting everyone involved. So I really want to thank Aaron and Jay, but Aaron, first of all, for, for coming up with this, such an awesome creative tournament that you know he asked me to be a part of, and uh, I got to pick AP as a partner. And and for me, you know, um, I didn't really know how this was all going to play out, um, and I'm actually pretty disappointed that. Um, and, and the way that we had performed overall, obviously, because we're in fourth place. But, but, but you know, you know, you look at this and you just think from the outside, you know, like, hey, I, I could, I could have done so much better if we, you know, if you'd done this and done that, and I got the chance to watch the first season, so it was pretty awesome. But then to participate in it against these guys, um, I mean, it just takes it to a whole different level because you know we really weren't prepared like we wanted to be, and I, I will promise you one thing, and if this event ever happens again, and I hope it does, Team USA is coming back with a vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> promise you that. Talk is cheap. I'm gonna just uh, go back about five years, and I remember the text I got from Aaron saying, I got this new thing that's coming up. I'm not sure what's going to happen. You guys may be involved in it and stuff. So and I said, well, let us know and we'll, uh, we'll talk about it and stuff. And then, you know, then we kind of etched out the details and sure enough, we were picked for a team. So that was kind of the start of it. And uh, it's grown such, so much here in the last few years. And just want to thank so much the sponsors. Like this would never have happened without the sponsors. Like you have no idea how much like to get all of us going, all the cameramen and everything, and the editing, just, yeah, there's some things that editors shouldn't see too, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Sean and I gave us, I uh, gave it 100%, and, uh, and, you know, we were going for trophies, if you go into Saskatchewan, um, you know, we were just kind of etching out the species we needed to target, and we, we knew that the species we had to go for, we had to catch the trophies to get those points, you know, so we gave it everything and just want to say uh, to my brother, you guys hold <laughs> a few world records that I Sorry, used Which is which? Is which? No, I still don't know. Bad, my bad. Okay, okay. This is my brother Sean and I did teach him everything he knows. I am a little older than him, so he does all the world records, but I'm his guy. Um, I'd like to thank all of you people for making this happen. This is because incredible. This, 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 is this absolutely would have happened. Uh, everyone watching, commenting, thank you so much. Um, as you see, my mind was blown up catching that brown trout and that lake trout. Um, just glad that those fish can show up for you guys. So, and, and the cameraman, our cameraman's here. Um, the other ones, Marcel. Marcel. Thanks to everyone involved, like, it, it was awesome, and also, like, there's so many highs and so many lows, and I think Adam and I hit every one of those this last season. Uh, the last episode looked pretty grim there, but we uh, pulled through and we tried to come back there, and we just ran out of time, so. You know, pass the mic, or do you got a mic? Have we got a mic. Um... The amount of editing, I was crunching the numbers on this, and I think, let's say each team did an average of 60 hours of footage times four teams, 240 hours. Nick and stand up, please. Nick and sort it through. <laughs> that is insane.
I don't wish that upon anybody. And when I referenced season three, he started twitching a little bit. So I don't know what that means. But uh, yeah, he's been he's been working on it since June. You guys do not understand how much work it takes to sort through all of Tarot's talking. So, uh, Tarot, Tarot has more dialogue than the seven of us combined. There's one other point I need to uh, make, and I, I don't want to turn the spotlight on myself, but I filmed the Conrads for season one, so I'm the only two-time winner of 39 hours. Oh. You're welcome. I think any of you guys who have been following along uh, already kind of got the vibe of how big of a role Jay had in all this, so I don't know if I really need to go over that again, but definitely uh, as many comments and emails and ridiculous requests from all the fans, I think Jay kind of like rivaled everyone combined and how many times he kept poking at me, we've got to do this, Aaron, we've got to do this, we've got to do this. So finally, about a year ago, I said, okay. And, but you're going to do it because that's what he was saying. I'll do everything, Aaron. You just have to show up and whatever. So I said, fine, okay, let's do this. So if it weren't for Jay and Nick, this definitely would never have happened. So. <laughs> I, we're going to take some more questions, so I don't want this to sound like a wrap-up in any way, but I just want to tell you guys how special this is for you all to be here. Um, over the years, like, working on YouTube, you always have these targets of trying to get views and stuff um, to, to re expand your following. And for me, when I make a video, the feedback I get from like my family, my closest friends, you know, guys like Jay, obviously, and all of these guys have been huge fans and supporters of me. So when I get feedback specifically from them and my family, that means so much more to me than getting, you know, three million views. It's like I'm waiting for that feedback from my, my family and today watching this with you guys, it just felt like I was here with a bigger family. Like it means so much that you guys are all here. I never looked at my phone, so for all I know, the upload didn't even work and we didn't even go onto the internet. But you guys all matter more than that, so thank you very much. We had, we hit over 10,000 people live streaming the premiere tonight, which was insane. <laughs> Start off at first. I, I got it. I got something to lead it in. Maybe. Yeah. Who else is your tarot? Who else is your tarot? Yeah. Uh, what was the question though? I don't even know. Uh, yeah. We'll dance later. We'll dance later. Um, yeah. I gotta go back with. Uh, I gotta do Darren. Jimmy Seahawk. Jimmy S here. He is. Definitely going for the win. He deserves the win in so many ways. Like without him, none of us would be here. None of you would be here. It's just like he put it together. And he he might have some emotional damage. But you know, that's what this is about. That's a story. Really yeah. Emotional damage. Eric's <laughs> gonna tell that story, yeah. So I'll have to say thanks for taking some emotional damage off of Aaron's back. <laughs> okay, okay. Aaron's gonna unravel the emotional damage, and we do have clips for some of these topics. Luckily for all of you guys, we do not have a clip for this topic, but this is, yeah. You start crying. <laughs> so, uh, Tackle Box Lottery's cameraman, his name's Ryan Bonin, and he's uh, actually was the... Hi, Ryan. Hi, Ryan. Is he here? Hi, Ryan. So Ryan was the uh, mastermind behind so many of the amazing Dave Mercer videos you guys have probably seen over the years with all the crazy camera angles from all different places and the music and the graphics. Ryan was a massive part of that because he was the producer of the show for, a, I think, about a decade. Anyways, Ryan was on board for this project, so we had this full-time professional cameraman that's setting up GoPros in every corner of the boat for Paul and Terrell. So it was a treat when you're editing. Nick's got all these camera angles stacked for me, so I'm looking at them, it's like, wow, this is just such a treat to have so much to work with. So Taro's at the back of the boat, and as you can see a couple times, he's kind of doing his thing at the back of the boat. So I'm trying to figure out, can we even see what he's using, what's going on here? And I'm, so I'm like, you know, right against my huge Mac screen, trying to figure out what he's going on. I'm flipping through camera angles, and I have bad posture, so my face is literally this close to the screen. When I switch camera angles, and Taro is peeing right <laughs> in the like, Taro's 
swung that close to my face. I, I told Aaron the same experience, and he's like, you're kidding me, I was going to tell that story tomorrow night. So, I, yeah, I had the same thing. Um, so we got some clips to play, and uh, they're kind of some highlights. Play that one. Yeah? <laughs> uh, the first clip to play is uh, the squirrel, the squirrel in the boat. I think you guys probably know what we're talking about. Are we going to be in the way? We'll move away. Hey, measure it. How many inches? Can you measure it? It's okay, buddy. Let's go, go, go. Let's grab it. Lean there. Lean there. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my
ghost it. <laughs> Never to be able to win the game. So then I start showing up on Lake Diebenbaker and poking around there. And this story is going somewhere very relevant. Wait for this. So Mark Tully, is he here? Yeah. yeah. Ow! Mark Tully and I are at Lake Diebenbaker. Oh, hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> and at this point, there's just rainbows known to be in Lake Diebenbaker for trout. But there is, I guess, grounds that have come all the way downstream from the Bow River to live in Lake Diebenbaker. Very few of them that even these guys didn't know about at this point. So uh, Mark and I each catch a brown trout, and we run into these guys, and we were so excited to tell them that we caught a brown trout each. And they thought they were brook trout. We showed them pictures. They were like, I think those are brook trout. So anyways, that story's for Mark, because Mark is sure that he has caught their 37-inch brown trout before they caught it. So they owe him a huge thank you for releasing yeah, yeah, yeah. that. <laughs> Fish. I think without a doubt, this is the fish of season two, the 37 inch brown trout. Yeah. 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 Pretty big, huh? This is happening right now! Man! Lord Corgan, I love you! Hey, Brown and Diefenbaker! Oh, come on. I got a G Loomis GL2, 8.5, medium action with 15 pound power pro. This is my bread and butter rod for these trout. That is a freaking giant! That is huge! That is a giant! Oh, man. Yeah, we rolled. That's what brown trout do, they roll. They get wrapped up in the line, and then your hook grabs like the side and it rips out. Huge brown trout! Oh my god! Oh! Huge! That took you a new provincial record right there. Oh man! This is a beautiful trout. That's like a salmon. That is as big as a Chinook. This is it. There's the bubbles. Just, just neutralize them. Just, let's just drift with them. Dude, that's a 40 inch. I don't just drift with them. There he is. fishing Diefenbaker since 2005 for the big trout and that fish showed up and I think the biggest we had before was 35 inch, uh, about 35 and a half and uh, yeah when that fish jumped like it was close to the boat and it came, came clear out of the way. You guys didn't see the first jump, it came two, three feet out of the water and, and your mind goes blank and it's just like you're just like concentrated on the fish and it's just like I don't even remember what I said, but we got the fish in, that's all that mattered, and uh, yeah. So I'm going to probably try and get a replica made of that fish uh, soon here. I, I was going to call beforehand, but like, wait, wait a minute, I can't talk to anyone about this fish. <laughs> so I, I, can't, I couldn't do anything, so, but uh, that's the next step uh, on that fish, and uh, hopefully it's still alive and next year. These guys are guiding for big trout now. If you want to fish with them, on Ethan Baker, you can do that, which is, I'm probably going to book you guys pretty soon. <laughs> and that's all thanks to uh, my wife in the back corner there. She started our business up. We were guiding a few years, and now we know we're going to go tenfold into this. So we do have a website at fishinggeeks.net. So you check it out. We have trophy guiding, we have regular guiding, and we're going to be setting up a lodge at Lake Ethan Baker. So yeah, check it out. <laughs> So there was, after the first couple episodes, there was like people that were heated that these guys used a plane to compete. Was there people in the room that had an issue with that? This guy, right here. Oh. This guy, right here. 
Whoever had, biggest, whoever had the biggest issue, come phrase your question right now, and these guys are going to field it. Go ahead. Whoever's got the biggest issue with it, you'll win a prize if you, if you ask it. Wow. Everybody's brave behind their keyboards. All you have to do is say, Why would you want to He's a stallion. How long before the competition did you guys book the plane? Like how how uh, yeah, how much thought was put into that? Excellent question. Wow, that was easy. You know what? I I actually knew right at the start as th this was kind of a little bit of a conflict. Is they they mentioned it to me before we had released all the teams. And I was like, oh, that's that's interesting. And then they found out that I was fishing in it, and then their <laughs> tone kind of changed a little bit. And before you guys share, I was actually like against the idea, because I was like, what if you guys get stormed in, and what if you burn three periods? It's not good for film, and you guys would have gotten crushed. Yeah. Anyways, so. Okay, so we're, we'll jump back like three years before this even happened, is I was fishing with a, a friend named John, and we were fishing, and and I've never fished with him before, but but he's like, I go up to Creed Lake lots, I got a plane, and you, you should come with me up there. And I was like, absolutely, let's do this, you know? And then I was like, whatever, you know? So then I, the next time I was fishing with him was a year after that, and he had watched all 39 Hours season one, and then he's like, we're fishing, and I didn't want to say anything, because I didn't want to bring it up. And he's like, you know what, we should, I should fly you up there, and you guys should start up at Cree Lake. And I was like, hey, that's a great idea. <laughs> and so, yeah, so we kind of just uh, played around with the idea a little bit, and John, John is just a guy, he's a friend, and he fishes up there a few times, so basically this is how it went down. Three days before 39 hours start, I was texting John, I said, so what's going on? He said, well, there's probably a 30% chance we're gonna make it up there. And I said, okay, well, make sure you have plan B and plan C. So the day before, 50% chance. I'm like, Sean, this is not looking good. <laughs> so it was the morning of the, well, the day before, when we left, or two days before, he said, this is happening. So yeah, we got on the plane, got up there, and we, we were about to land. He said, pack light, so we pack light. We're about to land, and, he, and I'm going, hey, what, what are we gonna eat? And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean we don't know? I don't know. We didn't really pack food. I'm like, well, what do you mean? And then we're not like, we just housed in a, it was like a shack actually, and there was actually a tent on it. And Lodge didn't even know we were coming. Yeah. <laughs> so so John, John's friends with the previous owner of the lodge, so we were going up with them, but the lodge is owned by uh, Crystal Lodge, so, so yeah. Anyway, we long, long story short, we ate fish for breakfast, yeah. lunch, and supper. <laughs> we had lunch. <laughs> So that's kind of the story. We were not guided up there. We, Sean and I had to find our own spots. John came um, with me on the boat pre-fish, and Sean and the cameraman were in the other boat, and we had to find our own spots, and it didn't take long. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it does up there. Lots of big fish up there. Yeah, lots of big fish. You just, you know, they're, they're all over the place scattered. You just have to use a few big techniques, and I don't know, get lucky, I guess. Um, <laughs> that's the story of the plane. So. Oh, and on the way from Green Lake to Nippon, there was like 50, 60 click wins, so we all got motion sickness. Oh. <laughs> Poor Marcel. Marcel was looking the worst out of all of us. <laughs> yeah. So that was pretty rough, but we made it safe. Can we, uh, can we cue the Alex video clip? <laughs> <laughs> Caught this thing in or what? Yeah, I got it. Dang it. Yeah. Ben? Yeah, take me off that power pole. Hurry up. Hurry up. <laughs> yeah. You grab that net and long now. Yeah, we got issues. Still on it? Yeah. Oh, we got it. Yes. Give me a little closer. Give me a little closer. All right. Oh shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yes. 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 A victory. Oh. Lift up. Lift up. Lift up. I don't think he's 20 years old. No. He ain't even that big. Hey. Boy, you help us. Boy, you help us. Can we go?
We need to move. Let's go fish the main. We need yep. to fish the main river. We can't be jonking around with these four pounders that are sitting here up shallow. We need a main river giant. Um, giant, giant. <laughs> Bigot, come on, give us this fish. It's what we came here for. Don't rush me. Yup, get him. Right, right, right. We got get him. Get him, any peas! <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Nah. Oh my, oh, my oh my god. Let's go, MP. Let's go get a sucker and let's get out of here. Oh my gosh. That's the same fish. I know it is. Okay. Yes. Yes. You guys thought I was a bad job at letting smallmouth. Let's see what happens at oh, this point. Maybe what we should do is let me know it and we'll do it in that can. Get him. That's a Yeah, we got a different line. That's okay. I think there was a joke that my only job um, this trip was to be the net man, and I couldn't even do that, so that was really good. Um, no, I had, a, I think that we had a salmon net when we were fishing for bass, was our issue. Yeah, well, what do you think about my net skills? <laughs> well, they need some work, buddy. That's, that's the way, that's, but that's the, you know, the whole thing, it's, it's funny you watch this and I laugh about it, but we, we, me and him have been just talking about, it's just, it's all about preparation and, 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 you know, for the salmon, for the smallmouth, for, for whatever, everything we were doing. And it just seemed like for us, things just kept coming, going backwards, you know, Flat and, tires. and oh, oh, wasn't you. we had the power pole issue, you know, we, we were going off of, and, and the Conrads here are telling you, you know, they have a game plan three years out, okay? <laughs> All right, so that's how serious they're taking this. And I'm like, hey, you want to fish 39 hours? He's like, yeah, when do I got to be there? And I'm like, well, I mean, we got to pre-fish this day. So, I mean, on a serious note, like, I really want to win. I, I compete to win when I'm getting into it. And we, we <laughs> will do a better job next time, I promise you that. You guys have any more questions for Alex and Eric specifically, or just questions? Good question, general take. Come here, come here, come here. No good prizes. You and I just want a live target, a full tackle pack. We haven't even heard if it's a good question. What was up with that shit show of a mess of a boat? Whoa! I've been trying to leap out all the that, stairs, but that was that, fine. That's me. So let me just tell you, being a full-time fishing guy, but you know, three kids, wife stays at home, and I suck at organization. I have a hard enough time keeping up on messages, emails, phone calls, and, and being and organized from one species to the next species to the next species to the next species. So I just find myself putting stuff in piles and piles and piles. And obviously, you can clearly see that when you go from, so I will take full ownership on that, and, you know. Did you that, break any rods? Thank you, and I need that. I need everyone to just send me messages on a daily basis, saying, hey buddy, how's that cleaning coming? You know? And my man, Paul, he's working. So, Eric, he's asking if any rods were broken, or what was broken, any casualties? Broken rods, broken hearts, broken... <laughs> Every sort of thing seemed to go right or wrong for us during this, you know, and, and, and like, like we, I take it 100% serious, you know, and so I, I really, really, <laughs> I'm competing in this to win, so it's, it's like, when I sit back here and watch this, it's hilarious, but it's brutal, it's brutal. Hey, listen, listen, in their defense, you were so close with so many points. Yeah, the time could have been a little bit different. <laughs> but had you caught the right fish like some teams did, it carries you, it helps you, it helps you bring you to the next thing. So like gives you wings. Gives you wings, ah. man. So please help us get to season three and let's see what you got, boys. Let's see what you got. I think I have a question here. Alex, why were you always wearing bare feet in your boat? 
So I don't like wearing shoes because I feel more mobile, like a spider monkey in the boat. And just <laughs> as you can tell, I need everything I can to get on that net. So that's why. Thanks for the question. You guys, if you have more questions, you can line up right here. Oh jeez! Oh jeez! <laughs> Why did you guys change from the first season to the second the uh, minimum requirement for the fish size? <laughs> okay, so the question is, first season the minimum size was 12 inch. Oh, come back here. Acme, Tackle, Google Eye Jigs, we were talking about them the whole time. There's a couple of those, a couple of these. Thank you very much. Um, so the idea of this format from the start is it was roughly based off of Fly vs. Jerk in Europe, which was a pike-specific tournament, except uh, I, along with every, all my friends that I collaborated with on this idea, wanted to make it like even more open-ended, like no boundaries, no rules, like just within the law, but all species in play. And the problem is, is that there's like not exciting species that start to come into play, like m obscure minnows and different things that nobody knows about. So the first season was 12-inch, um, minimum size, but then we realized that we kind of excluded a lot of panfish and stuff that Tara really loves his panfish, so we wanted to get those in there. So we dropped it to 10 inches, and I mean, we would keep dropping it, we just don't want to be having people measuring common shiners and different things like that. We want like even in this episode, was it bad they were fishing for the whole time? R-U-D-D. Is that how you spell it? Yeah? Rod. Epic. Who loves that rod? Let's talk about Rudd. Let's talk about Rudd. Hey, you want to talk about Rudd? Uh, raise your hand if you caught a Rudd, Terrell. <laughs> Has anybody in the room caught a Rudd? I'm jealous about that Rudd. That's the first, only fish I wasn't happy that Paul caught during that tournament, even though it was a point. <laughs> I was hating. I felt like an AP hater. I love AP, man. Don't hate on this guy, man. This guy keeps it real. He's a big time dude. And he's down the road, man. That's how I got love from. You need a guy with 800,000 subs. They don't act like him. He's a good guy, man. He's real. Uh, for Paul and Taro, from doing season one to season two, what did you guys change? I think. More prep for sure. Like we did pretty well with the day of pre-fish. Like, but I feel terrible that when I watch how much prep the Conrads did and everything, I'm like, I feel guilty that you know we struggled for two periods and I don't know if we had to do that. So we had to do it again. Paul, would you agree? Uh, I, you know, I think like every time you do something, you see something, you, you try to better yourself, and you say, "Geez, what did I do wrong? What could Terry do better?" And I think one of the things that, well, no, one of the things that, that um, is really hard to factor in is just like the sleep deprivation and what it does to your thought process. And then when people are stealing points from you, it really throws your game up, right? So we had a really strong beginning, and I feel like the sleep deprivation caught up with it. This was so much harder because what happens that maybe we didn't capture enough of is you got to get back, you got to charge batteries. The cameraman has to dump stuff off. So... Like Jay and his crew have done, like Thrive Visual has done such an amazing job and there's so many hours and really ultimately guys, the editors and Jay and Aaron have made us look great, but they're the guys that made this happen. So these people uh, that film this for us, what they don't get the credit they deserve because there's so much work and so much stuff that they have to do after we're done fishing in order to get prepared for the next day. So. Um, you know, it, it's it's a lot more challenging than what you see on here because there's so many different variables come at you. Okay, Woo! very good. Yeah, we were too cocky too. Okay, we were a little bit of Adam Adam Conrad. We had a little bit of cockiness in us, you know, a bit too cocky, and then we started getting humbled. It wasn't good. <laughs> Our wings got cut off by Team Manitoba. It wasn't right. No, no. I just like to say. Being a hometown boy, I think you guys fished very well in this second season. 
Big up me. But I, my question was for the Conrads, and just in general, Aaron and the rules. Because when the Conrads brought the plane into the game, immediately, I'm like, what's stopping them from flying south to like the ocean and racking? Yeah, these guys are like thinking that's what we're doing. Yeah, you're. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, where do the rules go? And like, why didn't you guys go to the ocean? So, before we had one. I think we had one or two maybe group FaceTime calls with all of us, which was ridiculous because anytime you're FaceTiming terror, it's just impossible. <laughs> <laughs> I remember we all, we all got together and like we're all like sitting in their offices and then Taro's driving and like holding his phone down here and it's just impossible. But anyways, we went over a species list. So we had like, okay, what are we including? What are we not including? And you know, no man-made ponds was a rule that we didn't publicize, but no private ponds, no salt water. So I'm not sure what else there was, but yeah, just those parameters to keep everything in check, but yeah, there, there was, if your private ponds were involved, watch out, Eric Adia. We, uh, we wanted to fly to different spots, and then one of the, the evening, we wanted to fly somewhere else, but th that little plane we had, uh, you're not allowed to fly at night, so we were restricted, and uh, we just stuck to our game plan after we flew to Nipawin, and Nipawin didn't turn out, but you know, we, uh, we made some changes on the way, and uh, it uh, helped us. So. Uh, it's just kind of a question for all you guys. If you guys had to choose a new fishing partner, who would you choose? <laughs> and would you guys move to their spots or stay in your spots? Uh, I, I'd pick Jay. I don't know what you guys. I'd go with Taro, I think. That'd be kind of a riot. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think I'd have to spend a lot of time with the professor himself. Oh, I think I would love to see Tara and I compete together. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna second that with Eric. I, I think the two of us, if I could help him get organized and utilize. Uh, his talent, because I'll tell you something, what you saw on camera and what this guy is actually capable of is a totally different ball game. So I'm going to second that one. I would, I would be down to there. But ultimately, I'm stuck with this guy. So unfortunately, all of you, wait your turn. I'm not done with him yet. Season three, look out. Yeah. You know what? It's hard. Yeah. Um, no matter how much we fight, like we go through... Oh, we go through period. We have personal things. Like, we can go through maybe a year. We don't talk a ton. But in the end, but in the end, I always want to go back to Paul. And we always got each other's back no matter what. Yeah, I love Paul. But he's difficult. And I'm difficult. <laughs> but anyway, if I had to pick, it would definitely, if I had to fish with someone else, it would be AP as well. AP, honestly. Because I think we got something to prove. You know what I mean? Like, we both. nothing done. See? That's, that's what they think, AP. Right? That's what they think, AP. You know what I mean? And I, we, if you ever watched our interview, we did a lot of interview on my channel, and uh, we have, like, I think we have the... Can we turn off Tara's mic? We're the most hated guys. We're the most hated guys. We got something to prove. <laughs> so we can do it. All right. I think we're on to the next question. Oh. I, you know what? I'm sick of all these guys. After looking at all the footage, I would uh, I'd fish it with my wife, Sam, probably, actually. <laughs> Jay stole my answer. I'd fish with my wife, Michelle. A <laughs> couple 39 hours, as we said. And I guess I was going to explain this at the start when I was explaining about Jay uh, taking the reins on this. That is the main reason that Manny wasn't in this, unfortunately, was when I asked Jay to take this on. I was like, you're going to be there from start to finish. You're going to be my partner. You're going to be making the phone calls in the boat. And Jay was on for taking that all on. So sorry that that excluded you, Manny, but I'm glad we're still friends and so happy to see you here, brother. And uh, yeah. For all the teams, I'm just wondering uh, for a specific fish, what each team's favorite fish to catch was. Suckers! Uh, I mean, that, that brookie today 
that was quite the surprise. I think that was our biggest rush of emotion when we didn't know if it was a big rainbow or a big rookie, and you know, it came five minutes into the period. I think we knew that we had some pretty good momentum at that point, and Aaron and I screamed like little girls. Yeah, it was good. I don't know if I need to comment on this. <laughs> I don't know Lake Trout. Amazing fighters. Those Lake Trout, they fight really hard. Like, crazy. Yeah, for me, it's definitely big smallies, so uh, that's that's the fish I love to fish the most. Don't get to fish them a lot, but uh, I love fishing big smallies. Yeah, I would say big largemouth are my favorite, just because I've grown up fishing for them, and you know, I got that point, so that's it. I think for us, it was a, a bit of a personal thing with, no offense, I love Manitoba. And I think you guys have an amazing fisher here, but we wanted that walleye so bad. So for us, it was all about taking the wallet away from Team Manitoba. Do you, you want to talk about that wallet? And, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Anyway. What about, anyway. what about the drum? Yeah. A war drum. Band, sure. Yeah. Drum roll? You want to hear drum roll? Oh. <laughs> well, to me, my favorite fish was the bowfin that I caught. I didn't catch that many, so, but the bowfin was important to me because that spot there was a spot that I didn't fish since I was about 10 or 11 years old or something. My grandmother used to live on Lake Kujache and I used to take the little six horse we had there all the way around for miles and miles and go to this bay and I remember those both and I said, Paul, let's just stab in this. I haven't been there since I was, and they were there. Wow. So I brought back so many memories. My grandmother who got me into fishing. All right, peace, grandma, love you. I wouldn't be here without grandma. <laughs> But anyway, that's why it's tied to the family, you know? And it happened in the tournament. Magic. So, the biggest thing about 39 Hours in the whole format is to highlight all these other species of fish. It's not just about walleye and kind of going along with our master angler program here in Manitoba where it puts emphasis on every single species and they're all weighted equally if you're chasing your pins. Well, that's kind of what you're hearing about uh, the bowfin and for us, such a key fish was that uh, the buffalo that we caught because it was one that the other teams we knew would have a lot of trouble getting it. And it's such an underutilized species of fish. So even for Jay and I, it was such a exotic capture. And we've got a video of that too. Let's watch that quickly, the buffalo clip. Oh my goodness. There's way more here than we realized. As soon as one spooks, it spooks the rest of them, and then you're like, oh, there was 20 fish here. Like right there, you can see the dark tail. Right here. I'm just drifting up to them right now. I got hit up the bottom and right by one right now. Just went by one. That's right where he was, because they'll suck it, spit it out all in one motion. I don't know if I need to prick him immediately when that happens, but my bot, my indicator, not a bot, my indicator actually kicked it. Yeah, got him, got him, got him, got him, got him. So perfect. We saw him sitting there the first time by. I saw the indicator and this quiver, quiver. And we went back through it again. And then we got him in the mouth. This is so perfect. This is amazing. He's not a big, big mouth buffalo, but it is a big mouth buffalo. And this is going to be a very, very difficult point for anyone to get. Get going, get going. If I can get him corralled into the shallows here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Got him, got him, got him. Shoot, got him. Big mouth buffalo. Right there. Yeah, I could see this black tail right off the end of that log. He was sitting there and I probably did three drifts by him. And one of the times the indicator just quivered a little bit, and I'm saying that's, he takes the fly into his mouth and spits it out immediately. The next time by, he didn't take it, and then I got a better cast, and the indicator went down a little bit more. And I didn't know if it was the bottom of the fish, and then when the whole water exploded, you can see it was the fish. A lot of the folks at home aren't even gonna know what kind of fish that is. Hey Paul, check that out. That's a little nymph in the mouth. This is how you catch carp and suckers on the fly rod. Still healthy. Okay, we're not going to get to all of you guys, so we'll just ask, answer a couple more questions here quick. If you're sure you have a really good question, just get anxious. <laughs> um, a 
Okay, this one's kind of simple, but what was your favorite lake to fish in near Winnipeg? Or favorite lake? What, sir, what was the second part of that? Near Winnipeg. That, that buffalo was pretty close to Winnipeg. That was, that was, I mean, you could see it was an urban setting there with the tires and everything. That, that was pretty neat. That was, uh, what? Yeah, said one river, yeah. Super, super close, very urban, and uh, just seeing the amount of fish. There's a shot before that where there's just waves of fish coming down the river, and it's just incredible. The opportunities, like, in your backyard, there's a lot of fish to be done right here. So, thank you, sir. Okay, now I know this may be a little bit early to ask, but what are the chances of another season three of 39 hours? And when will that be? Uh, <laughs> people were asking us before season two is even done. Uh, you know, it, 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 takes, uh, it takes a lot of work. Nick tallied his hours today. I don't think I mentioned this before. Nick, as of this morning, worked 999 hours on editing, which is just, yeah. And at $4 an hour, that's a lot of money. <laughs> Question for Tarot. Anybody have a question for Tarot? Can you direct it at Tarot? Me? M Musky. Why couldn't we get this done? I realize it wasn't in season for everybody, but Tarot, you fished some great areas where there's Musky. Why couldn't we get this done? What happened was, no, we were in season in our area. We were in season. What happened was, where we had to go for Musky was too much of a time eater for just that one species. So. I wanted to, but it was like the last I would have gone. So we fished muskies, fished moonrise, just sunset. Sorry, it was sunrise and we fished moonrise. We fished specifically for big muskies. So let me tell you this, if, and I fished the Menominee River. You don't catch a lot of them, but the ones that you probably are going to get are going to be 48 to 56 inches. So I thought if we were going to go in, I'm going to, I'm a big, I'm swinging for the fence. If we're, I wanted the 37 inch brown trout. I wanted the big muskie. We did put in two hours at peak time for big muskies. Didn't happen. We tried. We just want another four. <laughs> so the rock bass team was targeting 57 inch muskies. <laughs> Yeah, well, we were fishing the Menominee River. That, that's actually a really, really good spot um, for catching all different, and, and we talked about that, that we aborted that plan, and we left to go chase a different bite, which was a huge mistake. We should have stayed there or even fished the other side. And uh, we never went back there. You know, we big carp, all sorts of different fish there. So that was a mistake on our part. I can see them. Show me. have a question for the twins? Is it for the twins? For Alex. Uh, <laughs> when are you going to have more dinner bells that are bigger and the tantrums as well? Anyway. <laughs> How about a rod? Yeah. Uh, on a serious note, we, we will have some more dinner bells, I promise, by the end of March, but I think they should be here within the first or second week of March. They're coming. More hook, better hooks, better split rings. They're gonna be they're gonna be good. That's how Alex deals with customer service. Stop yelling at me, just take the rod! <laughs> Okay, so why did you choose to make it 39 hours instead of 40 or 37 or whatever? And where did Tarot come up with spinning Dinka Fury? It just sounds good, you know, I just feel it inside and I let it go. It's like peeing in front of a camera. Eric, you gotta know. What were you doing when you left AP hanging in the beginning? <laughs> beginning of pre-fish, so. All right, so as you know, I'm a full-time charter captain, right? So I fish all year, 
and I was doing charter trips every single day on Lake Michigan, usually two trips a day. So coming off that, going right into pre-fish, my boat was just full of salmon stuff. So now I'm getting everything ready for, everything ready for, yeah, for, I mean, for suckers, carp, you know, like muskies and just a lot of stuff. So I was really, and I told him, I said, look, there's a the Peshtigo River, there's a couple of spots, just go check it out. Let me know if the big smallies are there. And they were there. So I felt really good about getting our smallie point there because there's monster smallies in this river and some pike and suckers and stuff. And he got both that stuff while I was bringing up the boat full of all sorts of stuff. But yeah, again, weren't prepared. My fault. Okay, my question is for the Conrad boys. Um, really enjoyed watching you guys this season. My team medical is definitely my guys. Um, but I want to know if you caution people about doing 39 hours. You said it was a tough go. I want to know if you're in for Sam. Oh, we're all in <laughs> Nobody drove through us. We never did dollar driving. Uh, we never slept in the plane, right? Yeah, well, we didn't sleep. We were motion sickness the whole time. So it's, uh, <laughs> it was very tough on the bodies. Uh, I know that at the very end when I was uh, launching the boat, I was winching the boat up, I passed out. So, yeah, it's just not good. And Sean's like, maybe we should have a, a beer to cheer. I'm like, ah, yeah, I can handle that. <laughs> so, yeah, and we had to watch uh, how many energy drinks we were drinking because the, the, we were pounding waters and vitamin waters. And just lack of sleep, you gotta eat, you gotta keep yourself hydrated and stuff. And, yeah, I uh, just want to give one shout out to my buddy Hayden. He's the one who drove the truck in to pick us up for the airplane, and he helped us up pre-fish too. So. Shout out to my buddy there. Thank you. I never really answered that season three question before, but like, we're always talking about it. We want a season three just as bad as you guys, and it's just the pieces need to align, and this has been 14 months of work, so we're gonna just like let the dust settle, and then we'll discuss it all. So that's answering whoever's question that was earlier, so. Why well, I have questions for Alex. Did you get the happy meal that you were promised? <laughs> what was that, Ty? Did you get the Happy Meal you were promised by Eric? <laughs> Does he still owe you a Happy Meal? Yes. <laughs> no more comments. <laughs> this is uh, 14 minutes over. Uh, why do you guys not target largemouth or bluegill? Uh, it just wasn't in our tour. Like, just, you know. It would be nice to be everywhere at once, and that would be one thing to be cool about a plane, but we just kind of did a tour, and we had a lot of different options along the way where we could have done other things that we didn't even get to, but as you know about Manitoba, we've got like one small population of each, so it's kind of just not, not on our path. Big, big, big question here for Team Sass, right? You guys came in really, really strong here with that. Uh, I don't know, I believe 47 inch lake trout, or well, how big was it? Yeah, so huge, huge lake trout you came in. But maybe do you think that burbot that you guys, you know, you could have probably took away from Team Manitoba really quick? Um, so we pre fished for burbot at Cree, and we didn't catch any because we didn't know where they were. Tried jigging them 100 feet for about 45 minutes. Um, Deep and Baker, we catch them after dark. Yeah. Uh, so we tried to pop them in the nose. yeah, we we tried looking with them with the camera, and uh, honestly, that time of year, if we could have fished half hour after sunset, it probably would have happened. So, all right, thank you guys. We're gonna we're gonna cut questions off after they got the blue jersey, and we'll do some more pictures and stuff. We do some more prizes yet. Okay, well, congrats, Team Manitoba. Thank you. My question for all of you guys, would you ever consider 39 hours ice fishing? You guys all live in a climate where there's ice. I think, I don't think it'd be fair. Do you think, Aaron? <laughs> We're game. I, I, I'm saying let's, uh, let's, let's do this uh, the next two days. I'm in. Okay, how many people agree that we should ban the P-Rig for season three? That's the pickle rig. And what would Jay Stevens do without the P-Rig? Um, 
I would be lost without the pickerel rig. It's, it's my jam, yeah. We're cutting questions off after that blue jersey, so let's get. On this for Team USA, how many hours did you fish for pond fish? <laughs> too many, buddy, too many. I'm, I have had a hard time sleeping lately. Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> I haven't fished for panfish since. <laughs> what is your favorite live target lure? Yeah, I just take notes from the Conrads. Like, I'm padding through the footage like when I had that unfortunate situation when something swung right near my face. I'm looking for any tips I can get from these guys, because this is the best of the best. Like, part of planning this from inception was finding the best competition available and I am confident that we have that right here. So I would pay attention to what the comrades are using and that's what I'd be using too. Um this is for Team Acme Kaylin. Um why did you guys fish for bluegill so much? <laughs> because we suck. <laughs> hey to answer that last question, what was the exact live target that caught that fish? Uh, the, the brown trout, the 37 inch brown trout, remember? Yeah. Uh, the, the smelt pattern, four and a half inch uh, shallow diving live target, as you see. Does your brother tie your hooks on? He had to tell you exactly what the bait was. <laughs> <laughs> I got it into that fish. <laughs> uh, could any of the teams leave their province or state where their boundaries? Yes, all of North America was open. Yeah, there, there weren't boundaries that we put on anyone. We were Team Manitoba, but we've got a really good relationship with our friends at Trout Manitoba, and they never even said, you better not leave Manitoba. So I mean, it, we were mindful to stay in Manitoba, but it wasn't necessary that we had to. So we didn't put any rules on anyone in terms of where they could go. Eric wanted to go to Florida, but we talked about that. It just wasn't a good fit to not have overlapping species. So. Hey, almost happened to a plane for that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for Team Sask, what happened to the grayling? Oh yeah, uh, so we got some intel on the grayling. We were at uh, Crystal, Crystal Lodge and we were looking for them. We, we were talking about all the locals and they, they fluked them that time of year, but they're all in the northern part of the lake um, in a river. I think they were spawning or something. It was just way too far. Yeah. I know you guys didn't see, but um, we did try for them, and we didn't get any, and everyone was telling us they were at the far north end lake, and game day, we had six to seven foot swells to deal with, and you didn't see that, but it was just dangerous, so we, yeah, it hit us hard, but we needed that grayling point. We didn't get it, so. Um, Okay, so this is from my uh, buddies back in Ontario. It's for Taro. They want to really know how do you catch a 10 inch bluegill? <laughs> you know what? I'll tell you something. These Manitoba boys are all about inches. We're all about weight in Ontario. So when I look at these fish, they say, oh, that's, oh, that's a 12 inch, or if I had to say, but that's a million old pound or whatever. Man! It is so hard to catch a 10 inch is what I realized. You see these things, you're like, oh, that's a 10 inch. Put them on that damn measuring board. <laughs> nine inches, nine inches, nine inches, eight and a half, nine and a little bit. It's so hard. So I don't know. Do I catch 10 inches? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> hey, how about Lake Metagosh in Manitoba? Is it pretty easy to catch a 10 incher there? Or 300 bluegill, but when the crunch is on and the time is there, sometimes it just happens for some people that they catch the right fish and sometimes you catch the wrong fish. That's how it goes in 39 hours. I guess the last question has to be important. Uh, um, one I got some for Eric. You like hats? Yeah, yeah find in the water. That's my brother. He flew us out here. And he caught a 29 inch greenback today. Woo! Yeah, yeah. Um, I can wear this hat too. 
Um, last quick question. Do you have any uh, bloopers or credits or something that we can look forward to? Uh, a final extra, extra little movie. Nick, do you want to go back to work this week? Absolutely not! <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Alright guys, I want to get a really, really sweet photo before we wrap this up. So we're going to get you guys to stand up. Lena's going to... Shout out to Lena for photographing this event. <laughs> Everybody stand up. This isn't the end. We're going to draw more prizes yet. Alright. We should all crouch down, guys, so we can. They make us get her brother's face. Sorry, I forgot to speak in terms you'd understand. To all of you watching the live stream, thank you. The camera right there. You guys are the best. Shout out to all of our amazing sponsors Aquaview, Acme Kalins, Manitoba, Dakota Lithium, Tackle Box Lottery, Illumicraft Boats, Live Target Lures. And musky bumper for all the amazing. Uh, you know, you can get custom musky bumper bump boards if you contact them. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and let's hope for season three.